Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome to this lesson. We are going through Al Fawz Al Kabir. So let's continue then. I hope you guys have been trying to apply these lessons and trying to come up with some good uh, examples from the Quran. Okay, so now we are continuing with what's being mentioned here. So let's have a go then. Uh, right, so here. On the next side, so remember we mentioned the five things over here. We said that there are five um, sort of five sort of uh, types of ayats that we can break down. And the aim is to try and keep these five things in your mind, right? You should try to always keep these five things in your mind. Very important to to do so because then you're going to understand how the author kind of sees the Quran, sees the ayats, right? So let's move on to the next one now. So the next one is. Uslub al Quran al Hakim fi il Qa'i ulum. So the approach of the Quran, the methodology of the Quran, the wise Quran, fi il Qa'i in uh, presenting these sciences. So he calls these five sciences. Inna ma waqa bayan tilk al ulum al dalala alayha ala uslub man haj al Arab al Uwal dun al mutaakhir minhum. So he's saying that al Arab al Uwal. This approach that you see in the Quran is according to how the Arabs 1,500 years ago would communicate with one another, would write things, would say things. Okay, so we're not going to find the genre or the style of the Quran to be like later Arab books. So the early years, so for example, the years of the Prophet ﷺ and that era where Arabs had you know lots of literature in the form of poetry and other forms, we're going to find the Quran uses those styles right because that was at their time later on as l l genre and linguistics developed in other ways we're not going to find the styles used by later arabs uh, in the quran so we need to understand this from from the beginning so he's saying he's, he's brought five points here one two three four five five points to show how the quran style differs from later arabic works so he says, وَلَمْ يَلْتَزِمْ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فِي آيَاتِ الْأَحْكَامِ Allah has not adhered to in the verses of the of laws of of, of uh, legislation and ijaz um, condensed sentences. So in other words, الَّذِي هِيَ قَاعِدَةُ أُسْلُوبُ مُؤَلِّفِينَ مُتُونَ. So in other words, when if you kind of read later fiqh manuals, you'll find that the wording they use, the way that they kind of word the books is very kind of like um, condensed and they try to write the sentence in a very condensed manner. The Quran doesn't do this, right? The Quran sometimes will even repeat one ruling several times throughout the Quran. Like aqimu salat, Allah may repeat it several times, atu zakat, give zakat, several times. But in the books of fiqh, you won't find that. They're very, very sort of like systematic, very precise in how they uh, work, uh, string the words together. In, in the fiqh textbooks. The Quran isn't like that. Number two, وَمَخْتَارَ تَنْقِيحُ الْقَوَاعِدِ الْكُلِّيَّةِ الْقُرْآنِيَّةِ عَنِ الْقُيُودَاتِ غَيْرَ ضُرِّيَّةِ And the Quran has not opted to use those refined general uh, principles or universal principles and قُيُودَاتِ from uh, extra sort of like conditions which are not necessary كَمَا هُوَ صَنْعَةُ مُؤَلِّفِ أُسُلُ الْفِقْهِ Just like you find in the uh, authorships of the scholars of usul fiqh you don't really find that in the quran so the quran would not mention like a, a definition which has specific wording in there that kind of tells you uh, what the particular topic is about it's something which is based generally on the uh, convention of society and the arabs at that time whereas when you study books of usul fiqh anyone who studied usul fiqh would know that they used to like debate with one another regarding a particular sentence in a book so the Qurans are like that. Number three, اختار الله تعالى في آيات المخاصمة. When it comes to the verses related to debating, the Allah chose, selected in the Quran, those uh, arguments right, or those sort of like um, principles of debating, which were very well known and were accepted by the opponents. كَذَا إِخْتَارَ فِيهَا الْخِطَابِيَاتِ النَّافِعَةِ And Allah has also used those beneficial addressings. يعني اكتفى الله تعالى في الرد على الخصوم يعني Allah has sufficed with uh, responding to the opponents 
بين مشهورات المسلمة with the well widely accepted um, principles وبالخطابيات النافعة and with those addressings which are beneficial التي تفيد الظن which give uh, the benefit of speculation in other words are not um, clear cut or are not categorical ويستدل بها في الخطابيات العامة ظاهرا and which are generally used by people in society لأن المخاطبين because people who are being addressed المجادلين those who are uh, arguing كانوا لا يعلمون أكثر من هذا because they didn't really know more than this in other words the Quran does not adopt um, arguments which are too complicated for people to understand or require some advanced form of education or you know um, some sort of qualification in debating Allah doesn't use that so Allah will not use these kind of advanced things. He will only use those things which everyone, generally, any human being who reads the Quran, who knows the Arabic at that time, will adopt. Right. So if you kind of read later books, what you find is that the arguments, if you want to understand the book, you need to maybe study debating or you might need to study how to critique uh, works and books to be able to appreciate, um, appreciate it. However, the Quran is very simple in how it debates with with the people and it's very powerful as well in that sense so this is why it's very important to understand how the quran's language is used um, number four وَلَمْ يُرَاعِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى فِي آيَاتِ الْمُخَاسَمَةِ تَنْقِيحَ الْبَرَاحِينَ الْعَقْلِيَةِ Allah has not taken into consideration in the ayats related to debating تَنْقِيحَ الْبَرَاحِينَ in refining the uh, logical, rational arguments and qiyud um, from from like extra sort of like wording conditions wa shurut ghayr lazima which are not necessary. Kama huwa da'b al just like is the practice of the scholars of logic and mantiq. In other words, if you read the books of mantiq, what you'll find is that they are so specific in just like we mentioned about the usul fiqh issue, right? Um, they are so specific when it comes to debating and arguing. You know, they'll pull you up on something that you've mentioned and how come you said this word and how come you didn't use this word and if you say this word and it... so the Quran isn't like that. The Quran will not... because the Quran remember it's addressing all mankind and all mankind should be able to understand it and these like small little uh, small print kind of words that are used isn't something which the Quran uh, focuses on. Number five. So number five is Kada Lam Yal Tazim Riayatul Munasaba or the Quran has not adhered to the ayat al munasaba taking into consideration of the appropriateness and links fil intiqal from going from one verse to another min matlab ila matlab or from one meaning concept to another concept. So, in other words, when Allah He kind of changes topic, He, he doesn't do it according to linking one topic to another like later books do. So if you read like later books, like books on Adab, uh, Arabic literature, you'd find that an author, when he is writing a book and he wants to go from one chapter to another chapter or from one theme to another theme, you can always see this kind of link in between. So he's saying that Allah doesn't do that in the Quran. Just like it's um, a, a well-established principle amongst the later uh, scholars of literature. But Allah has addressed his servants according to what he knows is beneficial for them, useful for them or needed for them and he has announced for them and Allah does not take into consideration or does not um, uh, take any concern with regards to what came before and after no, yes Obviously, when there is no such form of so such a thing as the sentence being too uh, difficult to understand, no, Allah will never do that. Because وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِذِكْرِ Allah says, indeed, we have made the Quran easy for uh, as a reminder. فَهَلْ مِنْ مُدَّكِرْ Will there be anyone that will that will take this reminder? Now, these five things that he mentions, these require a bit of explanation because if you kind of look at these things from face value, you kind of start thinking, wait a minute, you know, when, when, when I listen to talks regarding the Quran, or when I actually read the Quran, uh, I'm, I'm told the Quran is very sophisticated and the Quran is very precise and the wording, yes, 
Of course, that is the case. Shaulillah rahimahullah, what he might be actually saying is that many people fail to read the Quran uh, by putting themselves in the shoes of a person at the time of when the Quran is revealed. What they do is they put their, you know, mantik hats on, or they put their fiqh hats on, or they put their, you know, twenty-first century hats on, and they try to read the Quran from the paradigm of someone in a modern era. That's a very big mistake because they won't be able to see the beauty of the Quran. They won't be able to appreciate the beauty. Imagine like someone who looks at a rose and then tries to understand the rose under, let's say, modern sort of understandings and said, why aren't all the petals the same size? Why aren't they all proportionate according to the same uh, flower? Why aren't the colors all the same? How comes there's a difference of where it grows? So if they are trying to look at the rose from a perspective of modern era then clearly they're going to make big mistakes because you have to look at a rose as a rose you have to look at a rose um, in the context of other flowers as well that grow around it so if you look at some of these things all right if you look at some of these things here you're going to see uh, some of this um, and inshallah next time what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into more detail about these Right, inshallah, I'm going to go into more detail and I'm going to clarify some sort of misunderstandings and maybe even look in the Quran as well to try and apply this in a bit more detail as well. So just to recap what we covered today, we said the Quran, Shawalillah rahimahullah says that the Quran does not or should not be seen in the light of uh, modern sort of styles of writing. Um, for instance, like modern styles of writing, if they're writing about fiqh, they will use um, uh, like they will use styles of condensing the text as much as possible. Quran doesn't do that. Number two is sometimes in the later books you'll find them using trying to uh, underpin many many concepts under one universal principle. The Quran generally doesn't do that, right? It won't use these general principles as is used by later later books. Yes, the Quran does have com uh, universal principles, without a doubt, but it doesn't use the later style of it for this. Uh, and number three, we said that the Quran, when it uses, when it debates, when it, when it presents ayats of debate, it uses those principles of arguments which are accepted widely. Like it won't use a very complicated sort of um, arguments which a person can only understand if they are, uh, you know, someone who is very advanced in in debating or is in, in that nuance field. It doesn't use that because the Quran is talking to all of mankind. And number four, the Quran does not uh, uh, take into consideration or concern itself with mentioning the small, little, like refined details in arguments, which you find in 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 books of mantik. So, any of you guys who have studied mantik. You know, you guys um, are going to be familiar with the debates that they have on how they structure a sentence and why they use this wording and they didn't use this wording. And lastly, number five is the links between topics when Allah ch changes from one topic like the Day of Judgment and then he goes to the, to the time of Noah no, salam, and then he goes to the time of the Prophet salam, and then he might shift to the time of Musa salam. then he might start debating with some Christians or some Ahl Kitab, some Jews. So the, the kind of link, it might not be as apparent as you think it is. Like, you're not going to see a link like you would see in a novel or in a textbook. Right? The link is there, but it's not like the way that mo modern books are written. Anyway, so those are the five things. What I want you to, guys to do is try to apply in the Quran, inshallah. And inshallah, I'll see you next time. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much to all my patrons. Jazakumullah khair. Alhamdulillah. You know, with all of your support, with all of your uh, efforts and, and your encouragement and motivation, Alhamdulillah, this channel has reached where it has today. Um, and there's so much left that I want to do. And there's editing and there's, you know, trying to start new projects as well and get other people involved so that I can focus on producing content. Um, so, you know, if you guys want to become patrons and you want to support this channel, then check out the link in the description. Inshallah, there's also videos available for those who are patrons um, in the in the Patreon itself that I don't put on my 
normal YouTube channel. So if you guys want to check that out, inshallah, links in the description, like I said. And Jazakumullah khair, share it with other people. Let me know what you guys think as well. And Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.